Greetings, brethren, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for this opportunity to just sit down and listen to the word of God. We are so grateful for the gift of life. We can't thank God enough for allowing us this opportunity to live in these difficult times. Today we are going to be reading from the book of First John, chapter 5. We are going to read from verses 10 to verse 12. Today, this word is actually directed to the situation and the circumstances that are facing us today, the current prevailing situation of death that we are experiencing um, amongst our loved ones and our relatives. But God has given us the word today that is going to inspire us, that is going to encourage us. Then shall we read the word. I'll ask my brother to read the word for us so that we can hear what God has for us. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. Today we are looking at a time or we're faced with a time when the entire world is grappling with uh, the effects of COVID-19. But even though we are faced with this difficult time, us who are believers can find solace and comfort in reading the word of God and understanding it. Because the word of God has our promises for all believers. Now one of these promises that scriptures provide for us believers is the one that we have read today that speaks to the testimony that God has provided that now there is eternal life. We are seeing death all around us it has actually taken control of the whole world. But as believers, we have no reason to despair because we know that death is not the final end. But we know that there is life beyond the grave. I like it when we read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, where the Apostle Paul speaks about a permanent dwelling for us believers in eternity. God, our creator, has, pro has provided, has prepared something better. Now today, I want us to focus on something more better and more solid than just life itself. Because life is brief. Life is not going to stand forever. But now, we are assured that Jesus Christ now provides something better than just ordinary life. Now life eternally. And I like it when the Apostle Paul speaks about the fact that um, even though our physical beings, they may be hurt, but um, even if we reach to a point where our bodies are dying, but now Paul says that now, our spirits are renewed every day. That's from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. The apostle says that now our bodies may collapse, they may fail, but there is something that God has provided, something that is better. Now he says that now he has put inside in us something in, in, in us. There's something that has been put inside us. Now something that's great. Now, that's what now Paul speaks to, that it renews us. And it comes through nothing else but Jesus Christ. I want to speak about the challenge that we're faced with right now, that's death. Now, death is one of those issues that scare us. It's one of those um, feared things on earth. Now, death is a result of sin. 
Death entered the world when Adam and Eve sinned. And since then, death has tormented the whole world. If you read Genesis 3, 3, now God warned Adam and Eve and he said that if you dare eat from the tree, you'll die. But because they disobeyed God and ate from the tree, now death entered the world. But however, our God loving and forgiving as he is, he has provided a remedy to man's sinfulness by giving out, he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to be a solution to the challenge and one of those strongholds that are affecting the world today, that's death. Now I like when Jesus Christ speaks himself in the book of John chapter 11 verse 25. And now he says that I'm the resurrection and the life. And whosoever believes in me, though they die, but they shall live. He says whosoever believes in me shall never die. Now, I want us to understand in this difficult time of death, we are traveling through the shadow of death. But one thing that is important, we are carrying a testimony in us that we are saved by the name of Jesus Christ. We are born again believers. Now, the Apostle Paul now in First John says that now we are carrying a testimony. And this testimony that goes with us wherever we go, it will go and transcend beyond the grave. And as testimonies that we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And how if we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are bigger than death. We are greater than death. Because death has already been dealt with. And I like this one, that Jesus Christ now has promised that now. We may die physically, but we are not going to die spiritually. In a time where we are all scared of dying, you wake up every day, you don't know if you're going to be next. But I like it that now we are carrying a testimony inside us. Now what is this testimony, dear brothers and sisters, is that the testimony is that now we have embraced Jesus Christ. And now even if we die, we don't die in the spirit world. We transcend into another world because we have been assured now that we are carrying a testimony. And this testimony that we are carrying is that Jesus Christ is alive because he has conquered the grave. He is alive and he is actually interceding for us that uh, how so much I wish now. Jesus Christ so much wishes that now we all transcend into the world where he is. Now we are at a period and at a time we are, we are learning about the supremacy of God. Now, one of the things that uh, we are learning now, the importance of this testimony, of accepting Jesus Christ as a personal savior, that if you carry this testimony, it will take you through the difficult times. Now, we cannot attach value on material things and financial possession, but now we want to attach value on something that's gonna hold on until eternity on something that will transcend through the grave. And that is a testimony. Now Paul says that now we are carrying a testimony. And he says this is the testimony that now Jesus Christ now has come into this world to give us eternal life. And us who are saved today, we are going with this testimony. And this is the testimony that will take us into the grave and through the grave to eternity. And I like that one. It's so important. We are learning that now. Many a times we have been chasing wealth. We have been chasing fame. We have been chasing prosperity. Maybe us preachers have been preaching towards that goal. To say now people should get material prosperity. But today, now the circumstances that are facing us, they are constraining us now to preach the gospel of eternal life. Now Jesus Christ is the one who is actually going to be given, who gives eternal life here and in the other world. And that's very important. I like it now that we are learning that now. What Ecclesiastes 1, 2 has said that now. All is vanity of vanity. We are realizing now that you, you sleep today, tomorrow you are no more. And now it tells us now that all what we may be envying, 
All what we may be striving for that is material is not so important. What is important is to have this testimony that you get when you accept Jesus Christ and say now, I accept Christ as my personal savior. I accept Christ as Lord in my life. And once you accept, once you declare this testimony, it is the testimony that is going to take you through eternity. And I like this one now, that now, if we have this relationship with Jesus Christ, now you attain this testimony. And now it is a testimony that we will carry to eternity. It is a testimony that we'll take to our creator to say, God, we have accepted, we've heeded to your call to repent and accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior. And we are carrying this testimony that we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this testimony is the one that's going to unlock the eternal doors, the heavenly doors for us. Now we're saying that now. This is the testimony. This is the testimony that people need to embrace. The testimony that they carry to say that now Jesus Christ is Lord. Now I like this one now. When Jesus Christ now speaks also in John 10, 10. Now he says that the thief now comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, but Jesus Christ now says that I have come so that I may give people life, life in abundance. Now, we, this is the time, this moment in time, this period of coronavirus has actually opened our eyes to make us understand that there is nothing better than carrying this hope that is in Jesus Christ. The hope that says that even if I die tomorrow, I am carrying a testimony. I'm carrying something great so, because the apostles, um, um, uh, the apostle John says that now, if you die and you die with Jesus Christ inside you, you are not going to die anymore. You live through eternity. And I like this one. What is life? But now John is speaking to us in chapter 10 that says that now, life in abundance is not about material things. Life in abundance is not about gratifying our bodies, but life in abundance is embracing Jesus Christ as a personal savior, is having Jesus Christ as a king of our lives. And that's what, that's what gives us eternal life. Now, Jesus Christ gives us life in abundance. And that is what, that's what's interesting. And this life just not here on earth, but even, I mean, even after the grave, he still gives us eternal life. Now, I want to speak to the fact that, now, why is Christ a living hope? Why should we stand and trust him as a living hope? Because our focus today is saying that Christ is a living hope. He is our hope in desperate situations. He is our savior. We can trust him. He is our stronghold in this sinking sand where we're standing on in this world. Everything is just sinking sand. But now as we stand, holding on to Jesus Christ, we can withstand this difficult time. Now why is Christ the living hope? Now number one, I want to look at the fact that now Jesus Christ died and he rose again. Now I'm taking this from Luke 24 verse 46 that Jesus Christ died and he rose again after three days. That's, that's great a testimony to say that now he is able to give people eternal life. Because he's gone through the grave and then he rose again. And he's, he's able now, dear brothers and sisters, to give other people eternal life. And this should inspire us now that we worship a risen Lord. We worship Christ who has risen from the dead. Other, other religious leaders, they died and their, gra their graves are still stuffed with their bones. But Jesus Christ is a, is a reason, Lord. That's the reason why we can put our trust in him. And I like this one that now, when Jesus Christ died, there is evidence even from secular scholars that supports the fact that now, when Jesus Christ died, indeed he rose from the dead. If you're going to read Matthew 27, verse 52 to 53, now we learn that that when Jesus Christ died on the cross now, something spectacular happened. Now graves were opened up and the dead who were there in the graves, they rose again. But they had to wait for that Sunday morning, that beautiful resurrect, um, resurrection morning when Jesus Christ rose up. They moved out of their graves and they showed themselves in the streets. What a 
powerful testimony it is. There is people saw their relatives, people saw their friends. But remember, I want you to understand, it is not everybody who rose up that morning. It is only those who were holy. It is only those who were saved. They were seen. The saints were seen moving about the streets. There was a confirmation that the king of resurrection has indeed risen up. And people saw their relatives. People saw their friends. They shook hands with them. My friend, my cousin, my brother, you have risen. What has happened? Jesus Christ is a king of resurrection. We should be com comfortable. Dear brothers and sisters, in this tubular time, very difficult time where death is knocking in our doorsteps every day. But now Jesus Christ has given us something better that is eternal life. And this is the life that we're getting from the Son, Jesus Christ. And I like this one that now, this is not just theory. Even secular scholars like Josephus, now he speaks about this one. He said that, yes, indeed, this man, Jesus Christ, who was crucified by Pontius Pilate, now did rise from the dead. Now, his followers now actually didn't give up on him. And when he rose up from the dead, he did meet with his, with his disciples. And that confirms that now this is documented in history that Jesus Christ is the king of resurrection. Now, we can hold on to him as a hope of this difficult time. We can cling on to him and depend on him because he is recorded it is documented there is evidence there's empirical evidence that says that now he is the king of resurrection he he died and rose again and this is very important as we are going through this rough time we don't know when it's going to be our turn we've seen a lot of people exiting this world in such a short space of time some of them didn't actually lie in those hospital beds for a long time. It took them a short time and they were no more. But I like those who are saved. They are not going to die because they have eternal life. And why we stand today, we stand to proclaim that through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, there is eternal life. And now as we are journeying through this life, we should know that life is brief. Now, I like it when we read Hebrews, 27, Hebrews 9 verse 27 that it is destined that every man should die. And then after that comes the time for judgment. And now as we stand here, we want to proclaim that now Jesus Christ uh, is a king of resurrection. There's no need to be afraid of death. The grave has been conquered. The grave has been defeated. We are actually proclaiming an empty grave today. Jesus Christ is a risen Lord and he has the ability to give eternal life to each one of us. We don't know how much time we have in this world. We don't know how long we live in this world, but we are guaranteed that because we have accepted Jesus Christ, we are carrying a testimony. We are carrying Jesus Christ inside us and this Jesus Christ is going to give us life eternally. As we conclude, I don't know. I don't know. These are turbulent times. Are you carrying this testimony that Jesus Christ has eternal life and he is ready to give eternal life to anyone? Those who stand and accept him as their personal savior, they are sure guaranteed of eternal life. If we want eternal life, you can just pronounce it, declare it and say, Jesus Christ, I need you in my life. And he's going to just enter your heart and give you eternal life. Even if you die tomorrow, you will die peacefully because you have attained eternal life. If there's anybody there out there at home who's listening to this message there, Jesus Christ has come so that we may not die anymore. Even if we die physically, we live eternally. In Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Thank you to Heavenly Father for your word that is inspiring in these difficult times. We are faced with a difficult moment, a difficult challenge we've never lived through where death is the order of the day. But it's, it is inspiring. It is motivating to know that you, you brought your son Jesus Christ to give us eternal life. Death 
has been defeated. Death has no power over us because we have eternal cover. We thank you, God, for inspiring us, for motivating us. We are praying for those who are struggling with the pandemic that give them hope, give them inspiration, that death may defeat the physical body, but death cannot defeat our spiritual body. We are praying now that God, you stand with the church in these difficult times. Motivate us, inspire us, remind us of the biblical truths that we may forget during this difficult time, that we are destined for eternal life. Our bodies are going to be transformed and we're going to be given better bodies, eternal bodies, bodies that will live forever. Remind us, whisper these words in our ears, even during times of difficulties when our bodies are failing, that us, when we exit these fragile and sick bodies, we are going to be ushered into better and renewed bodies. We thank you, God, for, your assurance, for the assurance of your word that gives us hope and gives us inspiration. Father, we love you that Jesus Christ is indeed our hope in these difficult times. We are praying, God, that even if we die, we die with this testimony that Jesus Christ has brought us eternal life. Let us cling on this testimony, even in difficult times. God help us in Jesus' name. Amen.